back in league action after the international break. And it's been a good couple of weeks for Michael Appleton's side after a big win on the road against Wigan Athletic. It was followed by a late point against table toppers Portsmouth. Now it is five unbeaten for the Addicts and the aim this afternoon is to keep that streak going. It is the longest away day of the year though as Charlton travel to Brunton Park, a stadium where the Addicts have been promoted an incredible three times. Carlisle have lost four of their last five league games all by the scoreline 1-0 and they sit 22nd in League One after last season's promotion. But they have recorded impressive wins over Bolton Wanderers and Burton Albion in the last two months and were taken over this week by new owners. With less than 45 minutes until kickoff, let's take a look at what we have coming up on Charlton TV. We will hear from Michael Appleton, who spoke to Charlton TV ahead of today's game. And we will be taking a look back at some momentous games at Carlisle. And we seem to be doing it every week, but we'll have to touch on Alfie May's phenomenal scoring record and see how it compares to Manchester City's Erling Haaland. Hello and welcome to all of you joining us. Wherever you're tuning in from, it is a pleasure to have your company. And firstly, I must salute nearly a thousand supporters have travelled to Carlisle today, which is phenomenal, phenomenal support. Whether you're tuning in from nearly Scotland, isn't it? Or further afield in the world, it's great to have you here. And a reminder that if you are based outside of the UK, then you can purchase your matchday streaming pass for £10 and stick around for us all day. And I've saluted the fans. It's time to salute my uh, guests in the studio today, Kevin Nisby and Alan Kerbishy. Great to have you, you both here. And Kevin, I need to circle back to just a few weeks ago, <laughs> the game against Cray. Yeah. It was a memorable evening. Uh, how proud were you to see your son score that penalty? A, a memory to last a lifetime, no doubt. Yeah, I think um, yeah, it's, it's something he's, he's dreamed about. It's something that I've always wanted for him. Um, I know that the draw for him to play at Charlton was what he wanted, um, we wanted as a family and um, although they didn't win the game, I felt like he, he gave a good account of himself and yeah, he, he's over the moon, he done well and he's over the moon that he scored that penalty as well. Yeah, Kev, did you um, watch the game at all? Did you see yeah. the vi viral moment of <laughs> Kev watching the penalty? Well, I, I it was to, magic. I, I come to the first game here when I brought my grandkids because I was desperate to come and watch a game uh, and then watch it, obviously watch the replay. Um, yeah, I think that um, the, the the penalty, I was thinking, oh, you know, you're sitting there thinking, oh, please score. <laughs> 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 and you shouldn't be, should you, really? Yeah. But, uh, you know, because I think the Charlton team turned up, didn't they, on the night and yeah. uh, was going to get the result. But, uh, yeah, it worked out well for everybody. I was going to say, I think for all of us Charlton supporters, perhaps specifically at 90 minutes, it was actually the perfect sort of evening in terms of, of that penalty being scored and, and the moment yeah. that it provided. You couldn't watch. Mm -hmm. um, but what did it feel like, did, like when you did turn around and you saw that impact? Because then when we went in at half-time, it was 1-0. It was a really significant moment. Yeah, I felt, I felt Charlton started off really well. I thought May was doing really well. I thought... He played really well up front for, for Charlton and he was causing all sorts of problems for Cray. But um, that moment, obviously, when, when Cairo wins that penalty, I, I actually think it's a free kick. I don't think it's a penalty, but I felt if the ref gave the free kick, he might have had to send the keeper off. So I think he, yeah, yeah. he, he left 11 v 11, which is what everyone wanted. And I mean, at the beginning, what I wanted was a, a, a Charlton win and, and Cairo to score, and, which is what happened. And it, it was a good day for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what was really pleasing, Curbs, was the professionalism, particularly sort of in the second half, and then that kind of transferred to our midweek game here as well. No one really kind of wants the replays, but actually when you're, you're looking at the last couple of weeks now, the sort of schedule in, within the international break, it's been a useful period for Michael Appleton yeah, as manager. We've got, so, we've got so many players chasing their fitness. And, um, you know, and I think Michael, not a gamble really in the, in the first game against Cray where he made so many changes but people needed a game and even in the second in the replay people needed a game um, and it's very difficult getting players fit while you're trying to win football matches um, but it's worked out well uh, in the end and um, you know I think that you know Michael would have been a little bit critical of the first game but they got the second game done uh, and I think now he's got few more options in terms of fitness for, for his first team. Yeah, 
particularly even with the Sutton game midweek as well. There's a lot of players kind of competing now to get into the squad and we will bring you uh, first team news very shortly about who is going to line up against Carlisle this afternoon. Kev, I just wanted to get your thoughts quickly because Carlisle, it's a very, very long trip. I think I woke up this morning, I could see fans had already been on the road for a very, very long time and, and credit to them. But as, as a player, is that in your mindset a little bit when you've got such a long journey to make? No, I don't think so. I think I played at Carlisle a few times when I was at Leighton Orient and it's one of those you get your head around. You, you understand the journey, you understand the task of the journey and um, you understand that you need the three points. I think Charlton need three points now. I think they're doing really well. Um, as you say, not, not lost in five games, so we want to keep that run going. I think when you're winning games, you want to play as many as possible despite where it is. I think once you enter in League One, you understand the dynamics of the, the games that you'll be playing. And um, I think they're probably more thankful that it's a Saturday game rather than a Tuesday game. So um, I think what you want to do is you want to get a win and then it makes that journey back a little bit easier. I think, I think we need to try and trace this fan, don't we? There's a fan who's in the papers. I, I stumbled on it last night and so did Charlotte. But there's a fan whose girlfriend's complaining that he's gone to Carlisle today. As she should. Because <laughs> it's about a 700-mile round trip when, when he should be with her. Yeah, of And he also done it a year ago or two yeah, years ago. Yeah, I think the story went viral when it was Valentine's Day or something. Valentine's but, you know, you've got your first love. Yeah. It's always went, your football yeah. club. He went, he went to Lincoln instead of taking her out. So she's had the ump over that. Now he's gone away again yeah. today. And it, and I sort of stumbled on it last night, and so, so did Charlotte. Can you imagine if he goes home and, and she asks, you know, what was the score, and they've lost as well? It's going gonna, it's gonna to add salt into well, the room even more. Yeah. yeah, well, it's we so should, much. we should. If you're watching this, you know, do get in contact, because perhaps date night in the Charlton TV <laughs> studio, come and visit us here. Can I tell you a quick story as well? I'm, I'm on the phone to my sister earlier. My sister is, like, the other end of the spectrum to me, not interested in football at all. And she's like, what are you up to today? I was like, oh, Charlton Carlisle. She's like, who? I was like, Carlisle. She's like, who are they? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, no, it's not Carl and Lee, yeah. um, but anyway. <laughs> um, I, I digress. Um, when you look on paper, Curbs, it could be easy to see the form of four losses in five and the, and the results being 1-0 and stuff like that to, to look into. But there's a little bit of an extra spice to this game, or certainly extra context in the sense that Carlisle, despite that poor form, will have a bit of a boost going into this game with the new owners. I understand quite a lot's been um, being done ahead of kickoff. It's going to give the Carlisle supporters a bit of a boost that yeah. Charlton will have to be aware of, particularly in the opening phases. Absolutely, but I think uh, when you go away, go away from home anyway, you, you know you need to be on your guard early on. So I don't, I don't see that. But what we need to do is is carry on this, you know, away form if you like, and uh, picking up results, and then spin it around here because this is where we're going to win all our, most of our points, and the points we're getting on the road, you know, obviously will add to it. Uh, so we've got to keep the, keep the run going, especially against teams that, that are struggling. And I, I would imagine Michael's gone in to today's game expecting a result, you know, which, which we should be. Absolutely. Well, shall we hear from the manager now, Michael Appleton, because he spoke to Charlton TV earlier on. Michael, we're here at uh, Brunton Park in probably what is our furthest trek north uh, for in this division this season. And we're taking on Carlisle. You've made two changes to the side that... Uh, Got the draw against Portsmouth. Do you want to talk us through those? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the likes of um, Scott, obviously, um, I think it's took him a while to sort of get up to speed of where the, the standards that I know that he's more than capable of. And I think we've seen that in recent weeks and recent games. And um, I think coming to a place like this today gives you the opportunity to have that little bit more experience. And obviously, we've seen the impact that obviously Connor's had in the team over recent weeks and recent games. And yeah, I think again, comes down to having that little bit of experience when it counts. It's fresh off, uh, fresh afternoon here at Carlisle. We've got uh, an expectant crowd, not just from the uh, away fans, nearly a thousand Charlton fans travelling either by road, by train, by plane. I wouldn't be surprised if a few made it by boat, but uh, also the home fans have got something to celebrate. They've new ownership, so it could be a packed atmosphere and a lively one. Yeah, I hope so. Um, obviously, the, the ownership went through midweek for, for Carlisle, and that's a big boost for them, and it'll give them a an advantage today because I'm sure, like you say, there'll be a, a, a packed crowd. But um, yeah, I'm just delighted that we've got the amount of fans that we've come into the game today. It just shows uh, you know what great support we've got, and hopefully we can give them something to smile about. You're on a decent run again, and uh, the next four or five games, I'm sure we'll talk about it uh, as we go further into the months. But uh, next four or five games could be crucial. Yeah, they are. And listen, I think all the games, you know, there's different spells throughout the season when you have games that are crucial and. I think it's just because of the short space of time that they're, that they're going to be played in between and obviously going into that Christmas period and New Year and the window opens, um, I think we're coming into an exciting part of the season. Well, good luck this afternoon, Michael. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.
great to hear from the manager there. It looks fresh in Carlisle, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and confirmation there of two changes to the starting 11. So Conor McGrandles and Scott Fraser will start the game against Carlisle United. They come in for Louis Watson and Tyrese Campbell, who make a move to the bench. So this is two changes from the team that played against Portsmouth, of course, and got that late late equaliser. So it looks like hers. we're going to be in a 4-3-3 with Alfie May operating on the right-hand side. Mm. Um, what do you make of that line-up against Carlisle today? Well, I've been talking about Alfie May's role and, you know, moving him out from the striker like, down the middle um, to keep him, I'm not saying happy, but to keep him on side, if you like, uh, you know, by playing him on the right, is that he does nick a goal. He does make a goal. He is involved because, you know, it's like, Moving Kevin out to the wing after scoring, you know, being the main striker, and then not getting much of the much of the play and not much of the ball, and thinking, no, I really should be down the middle. Now, obviously, you know why he's being moved out to to bring Miles in, and uh, you know it makes us that much stronger. But as long as Alfie is, you know, getting something from each game, I'm quite happy for him to do it. The only thing I have got with him, I think he's a little bit too honest. You know, he tracks back and, yeah. you know, and he's making tackles and things like that. Stay up there where you do the damage. Mm -hmm. um, no, so, and I can see, I can see McGrandall's coming in because I think Louis Watson's done really well. But uh, Michael knows him from the past and, uh, you know, and the Portsmouth game and, and, and et cetera. So he's given him a little run now to see if, if uh, it can make us that much stronger when we're defending. There's almost a bit of a freshness with the role of Conor McGrandles now, Kevin, because for I think a lot of Charlton supporters, they might not have seen the best that he can offer in that midfield role. He obviously had that spell away on loan last season, reuniting with a manager that has faith in you. He was, I think, um, his skipper, Michael Afton's yeah. skipper previously. It gives you a bit of a boost in morale, and it's nice to see some really healthy competition in our midfield. Yeah, I think that's quite important that, as you say, we've got a healthy competition and... And I think the manager's going to play people he can trust. Um, I felt like he didn't play him quite early in the season because maybe he weren't fit enough and maybe he didn't trust him to play that role. But I think um, he's obviously got himself to a decent fitness now where the manager feels like he can play in these games. And I think away games are quite different to home games as well. So I think um, you bring in players who you've... Who you, and I hate to say this, but who you can trust away from home because it's a completely different game. And maybe he's one of those players that the manager feels away from home um, as someone that we need in our team. And Eden keeps his place in that left-back role, which has caused us concerns in the past. It's never really been a nailed-on position for anyone, but Eden's come into the team, and we've already seen on a couple of occasions, not only kind of in terms of his defensive capabilities, but my goodness, he helps spread up some really nice balls up top to the likes of Corey Blackett-Taylor down that left. He's an actual left-back, mm. in all fairness. And, uh, you know, he, he, when he first came, he'd done ever so well, got, got an injury. Now he's back, and, you know, he's comfortable. And... Um, as I say, a natural left back, so it's what we've been needing really. Yeah. Uh, I think it's been a problem area. Um, yeah, and, and, and he supports Corby Blackett really well. And I was uh, having a little look ahead of kickoff in terms of our form recently on the road, and you alluded to it, Curbs. It's something that we really need to try and correct. Charlton's last three away games have seen a total of 13 goals. That's 4.3 <laughs> per game. We've scored six conceded seven and I suppose for Michael Appleton that will be really really key in terms of tightening up that defence so that we can you know make the most of the goals that we seem to be well, scoring. I look at the side and if you look at the front three we're talking about Alfie May on the right, Miles and, and Corey Blackett, that's a danger for me um, and you know Kevin would tell you the same thing, if you're, if you're playing in a side that you know you can nick a goal um, that's great you know because that's the hardest thing so now we just need to be a bit more solid because we know we're going we're gonna to get a goal and, 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 and it's a great feeling when you know, you're not conceding too many goals because you know you're going to get one, you know, you know you're going to get the, make the chances. So, yeah, we need to tighten up at the back um, and, and not need to score two goals to, yeah. to win a game. Kevin, when we played against Cray Valley in that replay, it was such a strong 11 and the likes of Alfie may, of course, yeah. grab all the headlines. But I thought it was yet again another really impressive performance from George Dobson. And I just want to reflect on his development under Michael Appleton a bit, because when we think of George, we're thinking of those side in tackles, those kind of rescue runs to cover a teammate. We saw an absolutely spectacular goal on yeah. his birthday, but also again that kind of licence to go forward and get involved a bit more in our attacking play. Yeah, he's one of those players that go unnoticed. Um, all the hard work that he does, all the, the build-up play, covering holes, and, and as you say, it's, it's good for him to get that goal, that recognition, and um, 
just for everyone to have a little look at him because I think the work he does off the ball and um, sometimes the, the, no one likes to do the simple things really well and he does and for me getting that goal shows that he's obviously got that quality on top of the um, the game understanding as well. I like him as a player um, um, and I think he's really important to the team. He's, he's one of those that if he comes out of the team you sort of recognise straight away, oh my gosh we miss him. I don't think we appreciate his passing ability. Yeah. You know, and, and he receives balls in really bad areas and dangerous areas, if you like. And, uh, you know, his passing is excellent, short and long. Um, so he's your round midfield player for me. I, I don't expect him to score too many goals because I, I think with the makeup of the side, I think he takes the responsibility that perhaps he's the one who's going to snuff out stuff. So he can't have everything. But... Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's a top midfield player for me. Looking at that goal as well, he should, I know Kerb said he's got people that can score goals, but for me, if he can strike a ball like that with his left foot as well, when his left foot, if you can strike a ball like that, you've got to get higher. Scotty was like that. Scotty Parker started off really as defensive midfielder, and as he as he developed in his game, he realised he could score goals as well as um, obviously be that person to, to control the game. So I think he's got that in his locker as well. He absolutely does. And he's had a few goals this season that I think are going to make that shortlist come sort of yeah. April, May time for goal of the season yeah. contenders. Such a technically gifted player and perhaps we, we don't acknowledge that yeah. enough. And he's going to captain Charlton today. And interestingly, Sam Lavelle, who of course played for Charlton last season, made the move to Carlisle, will be skippering the visitors as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on this afternoon. And there is so much action taking place across League One today. So let's bring you up to speed with the games that we'll also be keeping an eye on. Third place, Bolton host out of form Exeter City, while Cheltenham take on an Oxford United side under new head coach Des Buckingham. Derby County have hit a bit of form of late and host Bristol Rovers, while Stevenage, who won last week against Lincoln City, travel to Fleetwood Town. Further down the list, the big clash of the day sees top of the table Portsmouth hosting Blackpool, who beat Shrewsbury 4-0 last week. And at the very bottom of the list, Wickham, who signed Lyle Taylor during the international break, host Reading. Um, Kev, let's start with that signing of Lyle Taylor. He hasn't played much football, but as many Charlton supporters will be aware, he's very dangerous at this level, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I signed for, for Lake Norwich when I was 33, around about the same sort of times he signed now uh, in... in ending of the year and um, as long as you keep yourself, uh, listen I know him, he'll keep himself fit and I'm, I'm sure the manager wouldn't have signed him unless he's, he's fit and ready to go but if he hits the ground running I think he's going to be a great signing for them, he's, um, he's desperate to score goals, he always has been um, and I'm sure coming back to, to English football he, he's, he's desperate to prove people that he can still do it and listen if he does well he can nick another move so I'm, I'm sure he'll be thinking, <laughs> do you know what I mean, like if, I'm sure he'll be thinking look if I do well here there's a chance that I can get another one. So, for me, you want to play as long as you, you can, and I'm, I'm sure he'll do well in this league. I really am. And, Kev, you've seen another managerial change at Oxford this time. Liam Manning's gone over to Bristol City. Do you think that departure is going to destabilise them at all and the, their position in the table, or will it be a relatively it, steady shift? It may shift? do, it may do. I, I'm not too sure the ins and outs of why the manager has left, etc. You know, did, they, did, the, did the owners put up much of a fight to keep him? I don't know. but. This is the month. Yeah. This is the month where it all happens, and uh, you know, November, December, uh, there'll be a few more casualties as well. That's for sure. I think Michael alluded to it in his pre-match interview that this is a really exciting time of the season. It's a really busy time of the season as well. And Kev, with Charlton sort of sitting five points off of those playoffs, it is very tangible to try and hope to use this period to get right in the mix. I'm sure. I'm, listen, I'm sure he's thinking about obviously being in there and then getting uh, January there and, and bringing two or three more players in and, and boosting the squad with a little bit more experience. And I feel Charlton, for a long time, this is the first time I felt like they've got a really good chance. They've got the resilience about them this year that they probably never had for the last two or three years. And speaking to the manager some, uh, a few times, and he's keen on the team working hard and outrunning other teams and working other teams. So um, I feel, I'm quite excited for this season, especially this time of the year, and, and seeing where we are in, in end of January. Curves. Kevin alluded to it earlier, there is something a little bit different in terms of the way you have to prepare for away trips. And we've seen, we've got that, that first win in seven on the road against mm. Wigan and then to have the character to fight back in the way we did against Portsmouth. Do you think that's perhaps, again, the, the work of instilling that mindset that's perhaps paying off for the team at the moment? Yeah, I think, you know, going away from home, as Kevin said earlier, it's a, it's a totally different game. Uh, perhaps the expectation level is not the same because, you know, you've not got the home fans. But there's certain things that you've got to do. And, uh, you know, certainly defensively, 
Um, you've got to be there from the start. And, and as I said, I'm looking at our side and, and, and the squad we've got, and there's goals. There's no doubt about it. We've got goals, and whoever plays in the number 10 role um, looks as if he can score a goal and make a goal, is it, if it's Fraser or if it's Alfie May or whoever. But we've got to, I know it's easy to say, but we've got to make ourselves stronger defensively. And, and, and you know, I know that must be Michael's number one aim at the moment because looking at the makeup of the side, we know we've got a lot going forward. Do indeed. Well, look, from one promotion chasing team to the other, let's turn our attention now to Charlton Women, who hosted last weekend a game here at the Valley. It was a one-all draw in front of a record-breaking crowd, but it ensures that the Addicts go into the international break, top of the Barclays Women's Championship. 1,001 people were in attendance here, and it looked like the Addicts had won the game when Tegan McGowan, recently back from an ACL injury, found the net in the 90th minute and quite a well-taken strike as well. However, the Addicts couldn't hold on and Katie Watson levelled in stoppage time and it was a real killer blow but midweek Karen Hills' side were back in action against fellow championship rivals Birmingham City and they beat them 1-0 in the Continental Cup with McGowan again on the score sheet. Kevin, a record attendance here at the Valley last weekend. It shows the progress that the club is, is making. Yeah, it brings a smile to my face to, to hear that now. I think people are recognised that Kirby's screaming. He's really I know. I saw, <laughs> Karen, I saw Karen on Monday morning and she was crying in the back. It was a killer he's, blow. Kirby's is, he's ready to jump at his chair. I mean, it just shows that like we're drawn towards women football now, isn't yeah. it? Like even Gerbs is sitting here doing, doing as the part TV. Of, as part of being on the league managers committee, I actually pick manager of the month. I have a vote for manager of the month in both leagues, goal of the month, etc., etc. So I should imagine Karen will be in the frame. So, yeah, she should you know. be. She's done a fantastic job. Yeah, fantastic. And also, you I'll, in there? Yeah, I'm <laughs> <to> make sure. <laughs> Big cross next to Charlton. Absolutely, that's what we want. Um, but importantly, Kerbs, you know. When you think that you've scored that winner, you know, in the 90th minute, you're thinking, oh, what a fantastic day, record-breaking attendance, we've beaten a fellow promotion rival, and then you go and concede a goal like that, you know, you can see it's written all over the players' faces how devastated they were. So then pick yourselves up, go again against a yeah. fellow club on midweek, was really, really good for them. It meant that going into the international break, that kind of gets lifted, it doesn't feel like a defeat, even though it was a point. No, and, and, and I think the way that the club has, has treated the women's team, especially with, when Thomas Sangal was in in charge because he did put a lot of funds that way and it's great that they're playing at the Valley and you know I know it was a record attendance but to open the stadium up for a thousand people is expensive as we know and that has been one of the reasons why uh, quite a few clubs have not played at their stadiums but every time now especially in the top top tier of women's football and you know the big games like the Tottenham versus Arsenal etc getting fantastic crowds and it can only get bigger for me and, and uh, you know, it's getting a lot of exposure on the TV now, and you know, quite rightly so. So yeah, it'd be nice to see the team play here again uh, soon, and uh, even a bigger crowd because it is on the up. Yeah. Kevin, just um, reflecting on the two goals for Tegan McGowan, when you've had like a long-term injury like an ACL and you're a forward, to get back into the mix of it so quickly and to get on the score sheet must be a real confidence boost as well. It's exactly what you want when you are a forward player. Yeah, I see her running through there, and, it, and, and you could see. She got, she looked like she was getting tired and tired, yeah. but she kept that composure at the last at the last bit, which is the hardest thing to do. Any any striker or forward player will tell you when you've made runs like that and your legs feeling heavy and you feel fatigue and and the moment there obviously last ninety minutes of the game and your injury and that, and to have that composure and and slot it in the near post as well, which is a difficult finish because the, the keepers are normally covering their near post. To to have the mindset to do that. And, I just had a smile on my face there, just to see someone come back from injury yeah. and, and score a goal like that. It's really good. And also, the big thing in women's football at the moment is the injuries. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about the, the ACLs, and yeah. I think um, there's got to be something done, like a study done, because it may be something to do with the training, it may be something that they've got to ease up on. But there's so many women footballers having cruciate ligament injuries. Yeah. It's yeah, quite incredible. I think something like 30 international footballers missed out on yeah. the World Cup and representing their country due to the ACL. And now more funding is going into the research to look yeah. into the strength and conditioning side of it as well. But fantastic yeah. to see yet another young, bright, promising player. And, and good luck as well to all our international players who are representing their countries. It's a little while now until the addicts are back in action because 
of that international break and a trip to Sheffield United awaits. And hopefully we can get to Christmas still top of the tree and top of what is a very, very competitive Barclays Women's Championship this season. Now back to this afternoon and back to Brunton Park, which holds some very, very, very favourable memories, some of which we're going to go over with curves a little bit later on. But if you can't recall, the last time we went there was 2012 and something quite special happened. Yes, of course, we got promoted under Chris Powell's management. So here is the footage from our last trip and it was a goal from Bradley Wright Phillips in the 76th minute that helped the addicts secure promotion from League One. And it's a crazy stat, but that was the third time Charlton have been promoted at Carlisle, which I'm in reliably informed by the club's museum. Mike Bailey's side were promoted at Brunton Park in 1981 and Lenny Lawrence's side were promoted in 1986 and a certain Alan Kerbishley was playing on that day in 1986. Curbs, any any yeah. stand-up memories from that day? It was a, the craziest thing, craziest own goal I've ever seen from a Carlisle player. The ball bounced down in the centre right circle now, and he was facing his own goal. So he half volleyed it back to the keeper and it went in. No, it was so windy. <laughs> <laughs> it went in, it honestly, Kev, from the halfway yeah. line. Is that Freddy's goal there? Is that, is that, is that, is that, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's the, that is the, like the promotion goal winning goal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you couldn't quite believe this own goal, but I don't think that the, the TV cameras were there. But, yeah. and it was a long journey back, but it was a, yeah. a fantastic journey back because I think, you know, the club, uh, I think it was at Sellers Park, and, you know, sort of to win promotion at that stage, you know, it was a fantastic feat, really. It's a ground that holds lots of happy memories for lots of supporters because it is, you know, one of those away days that is extra special because you have to travel so far. Kev, did you have any stand-up memories there for any of the clubs that you played at? Or was it one of those that you looked at, oh, gosh, this is a long way? <laughs> no, when I started playing League One, I was in my 30s, it? so it was literally just getting there and getting home. Um, they, they are long journeys, especially when you're... When you're um, when you're 30 plus, but um, yeah, I'm not really good at memories there, but obviously the, the club have, and hopefully they get another one today. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, look, we're going to talk about Alfie May now, and it's not the first time we've spoken about him, and I certainly doubt it will be the last. But a very interesting table came <laughs> to light this week on social media. We can take a little look at it now. Now, of course, Manchester City have had their game against Liverpool, and Haaland was on the score sheet again. So it's a two-goal gap our Alfie has to chase. But Kevin, what more could you want as a centre forward to have yeah. your name alongside that of a Ballon d'Or nominee? Sure, I'm sure he's hoping one of us screenshot that and send the it to him. <laughs> the top three. Like you, you'll take that, and that's, that'll be on your Instagram page, isn't it? Um, yeah, listen. 27 goals, uh, as I say, I watched him play live so many times and he's such a clever player. So we, we'll be lucky to hold on to him, he's so clever and we Kerb spoke earlier about him playing on that right, but I watched him the other day and he starts on the right, but he's, he ends up in the middle. Um, he sees gaps he, and, and when he's in that box, he's ruthless as he's shown over the season, 27 goals and um, long may it continue because I, I really love watching him play. Because it's not bad company to keep, is it? Mm. Sandwich between Haaland and Mohamed Salah. <laughs> and of course, that's taken a look at 2023. And Alfie had to make that move from Cheltenham Town, who we host on Tuesday, so up against his former club. And it's quite easy to forget that it wasn't as smooth sailing as people might have thought. He had that little run at the start of the season, and it was the penalty that became his first competitive goal for yeah. the club. But he was always so hard working. You just kind of knew that was going to come. And at the moment, every week, he is contributing. I know, I know it's easy to say that. You, you know, you never doubted that he was going to score goals, but I think us sitting up here, seeing his run, seeing his movement, and his willingness to get in the box, he's going to score. He's going to score goals, yeah. and and I think even as a num when he was playing as a number ten, just off the striker, you, you know, you're guaranteed that you're going to get bodies in the box yeah. because as soon as he sees there's an opportunity, he's going to get in there. And it's not like the other centre, uh, not like the other number tens we've got. Yeah. In, in in no disrespect to Fraser, etc. He wants to get in the box and, and, and nick a goal. So he's always gonna gonna be he's in fitting around off the it. Show, he's fit enough to do yeah, it. I, yeah. I spoke to him after the, the Cray game and one of the things he spoke about is being fit enough to get up and down. His mindset is, is really key in, in terms of him scoring goals and, and as Kerb says, playing that ten that ten position. He's, he's, he's like a, cent, a second centre forward, isn't he? Because he wants to get in that box as well, but he's fit enough to get back I think, in the I think position. if Miles comes through and, 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 and Chaps comes back or whatever, then Michael's got that option as the big number nine. But if he's got Alfie May as the number ten, he knows 
that he's got a strike force, he's got, he's got two centre forwards, and whenever that ball's in around six yard box, he's going to have another body in there. One thing I really love about Alfie, which you get when you listen to his interviews, is, is the mentality. I, I read a piece where he was saying that every time he goes onto the turf, whether it's at Cray Valley, the Valley here, or you know, away at Carlisle, he's always, I want to be the best player on the pitch. And that mentality and that hunger mm. is so important from a player that had to really graft through the non-league, got released, I think, from Millwall, if I'm not mistaken, as an academy player, which is a story for a lot of young players. Many might just slip and forget about the game, but he hasn't. Mm. Eight goals in the last seven games is quite some return, Kev. When you are a striker that you know scores a lot of goals, but you're in that red, red hot form, your confidence yeah. when you take to the field must just be sky high. Yeah, his mentality as well, though. But I think he's one of those players. Even if he's not scoring goals, he can contribute something to to the team. Um, and as you say, he's he's come from humble beginnings, so he appreciates what he's got. And not not to say the other players don't appreciate, but he he probably appreciates it a little bit more. He's obviously come from the same division that my son's actually playing in there and, and to be and to, those names up there and he's one of those and to be performing, not just scoring goals because it's, it's quite easy to get caught up in the, the, the mix of just scoring goals but he's a lot more than that, his mentality and I'm sure he's passing that on to the players in the, in the changing rooms as well. I'm just a little bit concerned that when he did go out there, you know, when you look at someone who's got 27 goals and he moves out to the right or he plays as a number 10 and he ain't getting in the game and he ain't scoring, then the mentality is, oh, I should be back up there. You know, why not? I need to be playing up there. Does he seem like a player to you? Does no, no, like no, no. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Is that he? <clears throat> I think is a team player. Yeah. Too much so in some. Do you remember respect. when he gave Chucks that penalty and oh, then he yeah, ended yeah, up yeah. scoring it anyway? Yeah, but yeah. we all got a yeah. glimpse of again that he yeah, is yeah. definitely yeah. 100 percent a team player. But, you know, you see him tracking back on the right hand side, making tackles and whatever. I did, what I was trying to get, at, I didn't want to lose him because you can lose a player. In the, just in, back in no, 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 you can lose a player by playing him out of position mm. and he could be going, no, really, I need yeah. to be playing there. I'm not c too concerned about the team. I'm, I want to be playing in my right position. Do you right think position. the manager knows what sort of player he is and that's why he feels he could play him out of Yeah, well. probably, yeah. yeah. But I think he also knows that he, he's, he's the sort of player that will still get in that box yeah. and nick a goal. Well, look, while we're comparing Alfie to some of the biggest names in the Premier League, um, <laughs> another point is around Harry Kane, and obviously he's gone to the Bundesliga and is, is breaking records left, right and centre. And a similar thing got said about him in terms of from his teammates. They all identify what a team squad player he is. And you have to have that selfish streak. You have to have that clinical streak. But what players like May seem to showcase is that you can have elements of all of that to be that... Yeah. Well-rounded we forward. Heard, I think we heard that he's, you know, as Kevin alluded to, he's very good in the dressing room, and when he turned up at the training ground, and and I, th you know, I'm not too sure where he comes from, like East London. No, I'm not sure. I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, sure so, that he's I'm round, sure. sort of around this way. He's a local, local. Yeah, yeah, lad, that's I what think. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, if you're saying he's he started for Millwall, so I think coming. No disrespect to Cheltenham, but coming back back home, if you like, yeah. to you know, a big club, um, you know, I think he's appreciated it and I think he wants to get us in the championship and, and, and see if he can do it there. If you haven't watched it yet, do go to the club's YouTube channel because they did a sort of day in the life feature with Alfie. Don't know if you've seen it yet, but exactly that. He seems a really infectious character. They follow him from his, his home into the training ground and he talks about his family a lot as well, clearly right. a family man. And Kevin, I think that plays a, a big part as well because for all of us as supporters, we'll go and follow our teams here, there and everywhere when required. But when you're a player with a family and you, your ties are, you know, your ties are maybe far away from you, that can really impact you. So when you've got it all kind of together and all in order and you are local, that must just all help make it click into place. Yeah, I, I, listen, I know players that have, have travelled and, and left their families and, and can't perform because they're missing their families and... Um, it, it really is important for, for him to do what he did and, and as Curbs say, come almost back to, to home. I'm sure he appreciates and, and values the fact that he's, at a, as Curbs says, a big club, performing well with a good team. And, and I, I think he's keen on, as Curbs said again, I think he's keen on getting his club in, into the championship and being a big part of it and creating history. And, and as you say, he's so infectious. When I've done the interview with Al after, you believe everything he says. Every word that comes out of his mouth, you, you believe in him. And... Um, I'm sure he, he'll be a great player for Charlton for many years. We're about 10 minutes away from kickoff, and we can see the sort of stream into Brunton Park. And it's really interesting, Curbs, mm. that the new American owners are doing their lap of <laughs> honour around the pitch. I mean, we're seeing a lot of this. Oh, look, are they going to do? Oh, they're going to do a bow, are they? Maybe, or is it just a oh, yeah? <laughs> and interestingly enough, they have um, dipped into the 
the market for oh, a player. Oh, there's some dancing. I've been so good. good. Hopefully, by the end of it, she won't be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Josh Emmanuel, um, the first signing, is, is handed a debut from them today. And I suppose it comes... I mean, Michael and his team are going to have done all their homework, even if it's a new player coming into the side as well, Curbs. But we've got to ruin a little bit of a party atmosphere that well, they're building it's, there. It's, it's all Wrexham's fault, isn't it? You know, <laughs> you know ever since... Ever since Netflix that, going on. Ever since, that, ever since that happened, uh, you know, people in the States are talking more about Wrexham than they are about Man United and Liverpool. It's a TV programme, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, I mean. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, 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 it? But, you know, we're seeing a lot of investment there. And as I say, they're probably, they're probably bought into Carlisle thinking, we're going to be the new Wrexham, you know, and everyone's going to get behind us. Uh, well, they're saying, the guys that are over there providing commentary are saying that the, the crowd's shouting USA and uh, <laughs> oh, in the week of Thanksgiving. Let's hope that, um, that we're not giving them anything to be thankful for. But it is an interesting point. And then, of course, we've got the FA Cup against Gillingham next weekend, isn't it? And um, next Saturday, and that's uh, American ownership as well. Oh, so it's interesting. So and, and of course, the money Obviously, comes Thomas and, yeah. and, and some of the backers now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that people, uh, the Americans, are, uh, are looking at our sport not just football, but they're looking at our sport thinking, yeah, there's a, there's a market there that we can come into. And uh, as I think we were talking earlier, saying that, that perhaps buying into English football clubs is a lot cheaper than buying into American NFL or American football clubs. Yeah, well, Ipswich, I suppose, are a really good example yeah, yeah. of an American owner coming in, making that heavy investment in the playing side and now obviously competing so, well, so I well. We got, I think we've got Liverpool, Man United, Arsenal. Norwich have got, you know, we could probably do Tom <laughs> yeah. Brady at Birmingham, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah, and then yeah, making yeah. that managerial yeah. change to bring Wayne Rooney in. My goodness <laughs> me. But, uh, yeah, just a bit of context to bring you uh, ahead of kickoff if you are just joining us on Charlton TV. Let's just touch back quickly on a point that you made about Alfie May, Kevin, because um, you mentioned about the sort of inspirational player he can be. And when you see Alfie May, Erling Haaland, Mo Salah, like, yeah. it is incredible. Mm -hmm. But he is a player that's had no... He's been told you're not good yeah. enough, you're not tall yeah. enough, you're not this, you're yeah. not that. Yeah. And there's a lot of players with incredible talent. And I know your son being one of them, he spoke yeah. on, on the recent coverage about dropping out of that academy yeah. system. Mm -hmm. And luckily he's got you to, to support yeah. him, but not yeah. every player has. But if you look at a player like Alfie May, mm. you think, well, actually, if I work hard enough, my professional yeah. dream can be yeah, bigger yeah. than I ever thought. Yeah, I just hope, I, I'm just a bit disappointed because that doesn't get spoken about enough. Um, players like that, and, and you're not talking about a young man who, who's come into League One and done okay. You're talking about a, a young man who's come to League One and probably the best player in League One so far this season. So the, the quality must have always been there, but as you say, maybe too short, maybe too weak, but um, he's believed in himself and he's worked hard, and as I said to you, when I spoke to him, he's, he's keen on, on his fitness and being able to, to cover the ground on the pitch so he can implement his, his, his game on others. and. And as you say, he's, he always wants to be the best, which is, which is, which is so refreshing to hear. And um, I'm, I'm, I've, I said to my boy after, I remember he's, he was in the same league as you, and look how well he plays in his movement and his finishing. So he's a real inspiration for, for a lot of young men and, and young women. So, yeah, I hope people like that get talked about a lot more. Yeah, and he's already matched the 15 goals that Jez Raksaki scored for us last season, and it's not even the end of November yet. So, fingers crossed we can enjoy another positive Alfie May performance this afternoon against Carlisle. And just a reminder for those of you watching on YouTube or on Twitter, you can still get your live streaming pass to join us for today's game. It's £10 to watch the full production and you can get your Charlton TV pass. And also, I'm just making a little note here, save £100 in our Black Friday sale, which I know Black Friday, because we were talking about before going on there, but uh, it, it's, it's good to get those bargains while you still can. So Black Friday, Black Red Saturday, or all <laughs> Black Monday. <month. laughs> but we would love it if you could head to cafc.co.uk to, uh, to purchase those passes and stick around, stick around with us. We've got a busy, uh, busy December ahead, a festive flurry of fixtures. But let's um, focus on today and the, the bit of momentum because as I mentioned at the very start Kevin it's been the international break and massive congratulations to our players involved um, particularly Michael Hector and uh, yeah. Roy Anderson for Jamaica mm. I think mm. I saw a clip and that Jamaica managed to reverse they were losing 2-0 to Canada and scored three goals in mm. 17 minutes and it's, it's brilliant and Kevin again I suppose that's a positive for our players and Terrell Thomas I think scored for his country and Daniel Canoe as well to have that positive international experience and, and come back to your league football is really yeah. good. But in the meantime, your teammates and your squad have been yeah. picking up some good results as no, well. That's, that's what I was about to mention. And the boys you've spoken about, obviously, playing for Jamaica. I've, I've had a keen eye on those, obviously, being Jamaica myself. So I'm so happy for them. But as you say, the team have been doing really well without them. 
um, and, I'm, and I'm sure they, they've been in their, their countries, playing for their countries, looking at their results and performances and, and hoping that the lads continue this winning momentum and, and they have done. So all, all they've got to do now is come back here fit with the same mentality and with that, with that, um, with that mindset that we're right back onto the league because it does become difficult, I think, Curbs used to have a go at me because I used to play for Jamaica and come back on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and come back on a Thursday and then play on a Saturday. And it is difficult, especially when you're playing for teams like countries like Jamaica when when some of your games are like 13 hours away. Yeah. So, um, listen, I hope they come back now and they, and they get their feet on the table and they have a good run now. I think they were in Jamaica for the first game, but it had to be postponed because the weather was so bad in Jamaica, which was like, I thought it was unheard of bad, to have that torrential. Yeah, yeah. and then, then to Canada and, and yeah. then back back to Carlisle, which could be a bit of a calm down by yeah. some coming from Canada to Carlisle. Go straight to Carlisle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fly straight there. Because <laughs> um, we've spoken a lot about mentality and picking up those good away wins, but also showing a bit of professional polish in the victories against Sutton and Cray, I think has been really, really important too. I managed to watch the first half of the Sutton game. It was, it was at Cray for the FA Cup. And I just got this sense that we're beginning to get into some really nice, good habits. And I'm not just talking about picking up victories, but there's just some more little actions now that I'm seeing creeping into our play. And it, it seems like we're in a solid, dare I say, position at the moment. I think, I think Michael's had a chance to get his... his, his his philosophy, if you like, or whatever we want to call it now, because there's all new names for it. But, you know, I think he's managed to, to get across what he wants. Um, you know, and he's, he's an experienced manager. He's been around and he understands, you know, he's going to Carlisle today. He's under no illusions that this is going to be tough because it is, apart from getting there and everything of else. You know, and the start is, is the most important thing for me today because I think if we get... If we come, if come into 20 minutes unscathed, we're good enough and strong enough, I think, to, to push on and get the result. Well, look, shall we take a, a quick glance at the start in 11 for today's game against Carlisle? If you're just joining us, there are two changes to the Charlton team from the side that drew against Portsmouth. We see Scott Fraser and Conor McGrandles coming into that mid.